I'd like to introduce Nancy from Sydney in Australia. Welcome, Nancy. Oh, it's nice to talk to you, Linda. Could you tell us what you were diagnosed with, Nancy? I was diagnosed with relapsing polychondritis, which is a rather unusual autoimmune disease. Uh, and when were you diagnosed with that? Well, that's the problem. There aren't any blood tests or scans or anything that enable you to be diagnosed. So most people end up having a disease for many years before they finally get a diagnosis. But I think you'd say my diagnosis was three or four years ago. Right. And how old were you then? Oh, I was about 68. And what were your symptoms leading up to your diagnosis? The first symptom I got was about five years ago. I'd just finished a year of treatment for breast cancer and I suddenly got um, pericarditis which is inflammation of the pericardium around the heart. Oh, right. And within a few days, I was in cardiac tamponade and heading out. Nobody knew what had caused it, and my oncologist and my newly acquired cardiologist both decided I had a relapse of cancer, and they told my daughter that, that her mother's prognosis was hopeless. Oh, dear. But, <laughs> but I didn't die. So it had a happy ending. <laughs> I did go back to see my cardiologist a couple of years ago. He didn't want to know what was wrong with me now. He wanted to know why I was still alive. What path led you to LDN? Well, this, this pericarditis hung on and on and on. I couldn't get rid of it. Nobody seemed to know what it was. I kept going back to the cardiologist and he didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, there must be something on the net. And so I read and read and read and I found some reports from strange places like Serbia and Israel and I thought gee they seem all right and so I asked my GP to prescribe um, colchicine which is used for gout right. and I later found out it's an anti-inflammatory and within a couple of days I no longer had pericarditis so I thought oh gee this is good this internet stuff <laughs> but within a couple of weeks of stopping the culture scene, I got the full set of symptoms for the relapsing polychondritis and that went on for a couple of years and nobody seemed to know what it was. So how were but, you feeling? I was feeling rotten, but I look all right. Problem was you'd go to see a doctor and he'd look at you and you'd think, oh, he thinks I'm a hypochondriac. I was very fatigued. I was sleeping up to 18, uh, sorry, 16 hours a day. And I was sore all over. Every muscle, every tendon was sore. Um, my ears were sore. And that's, that's one of the, the things that helps you diagnose it. It's because the cartilage all through your body is being attacked. My ears were sore. My nose was sore. My eyes were sore. Uh, my muscles were sore. Everything was sore. It was, it was quite painful, but it was classified as mild. <laughs> <laughs> because it's mild, you don't get any treatment for it because the treatment for well, any autoimmune disease, the treatments are quite drastic and mm. can cause a lot more problems than the disease itself. And that was my problem. I had I had nothing to nothing to help me. My immunologist finally said, Well, you can take Celebrex and my GP said, Don't take that stuff So yeah. there I was back again. So I thought, Well I'll go back to internet. <laughs> and kept looking and looking and I thought oh, well the end sounds alright now I'm not the sort of person that normally takes alternative medicine I come from a scientific background and mm -hmm. I even work as a you know what I call it, consumer referee for the Cochrane Foundation so I know what a good piece of research is right. but when you've got nothing mm -hmm. well you've got to try something mm -hmm. and that's why I started to take LDN mm -hmm. When did you start taking it? Oh, about 18 months ago. Right. I, um, I did try and get a prescription in Sydney. I couldn't. My immunologist, well, he, he, he pretended he hadn't heard of it, even if he had. My GP wouldn't prescribe it. I've got two children who are doctors, and they wouldn't prescribe it. Oh. So I thought, well, I'll go and do the India thing. So I bought it from India. Right. And 
<laughs> within a couple of days of taking it, I felt great. How has your condition been since you've been on LDN? Has it been stable? Have, has all those awful pains gone? Really? It's pretty stable. I still have relapsing polychondritis, mm -hmm. uh, but it's nothing of sore. I can go through most days and ignore all the sore bits. If mm -hmm. I go pressing around, I can find them sore and I have to keep lifting my glasses up because my nose hurts and lifting my head in bed at night off the mm -hmm. pillow because my ears hurt. But the first thing was I got rid of that terrible fat fatigue. And... You know, just having got rid of the fatigue, I felt like a new person. But it was more than that. It was that the inflammation was going. I would imagine not being so fatigued, not having to sleep so much and lying down, that must have helped the, the pain in your body of the pressure of lying, wouldn't it? Oh, no, I don't think, I don't think lying down in bed worries me at all. It was just that, that everything was sore, every muscle, every tendon... Um, and after being on LDN, I could go around and press all my parts of my body and there were nothing as sore and they didn't ache at night and I didn't have to take a painkiller to get me to sleep at night because mm -hmm. my, my legs were too sore. Did you experience any side effects when you first started the LDN? Well, I did not sleep as well in the first couple of nights and then I worked out why. I was washing down the LDN with a can of coke. I don't think the caffeine was a good idea before you go to bed. Not really, and, no. And the other side effect I had was a lovely side effect. I lost a lot of my appetite and I started to lose weight. But right. it was very sad. It didn't last and the weight's gone back on. I'm thinking you'll continue taking LDN, is that right? Oh, yes. I would hate to think what would happen if I went back to what I was. You know, I, I used to sit there and think, Life's not really like living like this. You know, it, it was really, it was terrible. I didn't believe until I got this fatigue that chronic fatigue existed. I thought that people with chronic fatigue had a psychiatric problem. But after I got it myself, I realised that it does exist. Fatigue is, is still a problem for me. And it's hard it's, when you have to make an effort to go and have a shower and get dressed. It's easier just to sit. Oh yes, is it is it still a problem for you? It is, but not as bad as it used to be. I used to sleep like you. I was awake probably four or five hours a day and fall asleep while people were talking to me and I just literally couldn't move. I can still function now, but I, I always feel as though my batteries are flat, if you <laughs> understand what I'm saying. I don't uh, feel I've, don't I've got the get up and go I used to have. I probably only have about two or three days a week in which I feel fatigued. I get tired in the evening, but I'm getting older now. I mm -hmm. don't know what it's like to be without <laughs> without this disease and get older. But no, I, I can do so much more now than I could before. And I'm so much more pleasant. Mm -hmm. I must be so much more pleasant. I felt like a bear in a cave before. Mm -hmm. And please don't much. come near me. So what do you children think, being doctors and oh. seeing your results? They both congratulated me on finding something that, that worked. Good. I said to my son, who's a, a gastroenterologist, would you be willing to prescribe it for your patients? And he said no. I think for me the research is sufficient for him to be able to prescribe it. Would he prescribe it for you now? I haven't asked him, but my daughter volunteered. She said, look, Mum, if you want me to write you a script for it, that's okay. I said, no, I'm all right, thank you. I'll get mine from India. <laughs> Mum being seven, hey? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what would you say to other people with autoimmune conditions who are considering trying LDM? Oh, it's worth a try. You know, even if it doesn't work, it's cheap. It has very few side effects. And, oh, it certainly is worth a try. Mm. And if they're lucky, they'll get the same effects as me. But most people seem to get these effects. So do you have anything further to add, Nancy? Well, I wanted to tell you about the, the very small things that, that really make a difference in your life. For example, I can now wear earrings. With relapsing polychondritis, your ears um, are affected, and my earlobes became swollen, and I couldn't find the holes for the stubs. 
Um, if I went out to a concert, I had to keep chewing gum all the time because my throat was so dry that I kept coughing. I don't think it's made a great deal of difference. Oh, yes, my eyes are not as, as dry. Um, I have punked and plugs, but after taking LDN for about six months, my ophthalmologist said to me in surprise, you've got an intact tear film now. Great. That's why my eyes aren't as sore. Over the last few years, my kidney function tests have been dropping and dropping until they're only down to about 50% of what was normal for my age. And after I started to take LDN, there's, well, I've only had one blood test. Went up to 75% and I'm going to have another yearly blood test soon and I hope my kidney function goes up again. Not because my kidneys have been affected, but because, this, my, this is my own hypothesis, the amount of creatine in my blood depends upon how much inflammation I've got in the muscles. If you can get rid of the inflammation, you don't have the creatine in the blood and it's not excreted in your urine. And it's not found in your blood. So that I think that that was a false reading. What else have I got? I, um, I was getting what I think was an irritable bowel and that's mostly disappeared now. That's about all I can think of for now. Oh, I know. Um, at, about two years ago, I developed lymphedema. And that was because four years before that, I had the lymph nodes removed under that arm due to breast cancer. Now, that stayed on until it was, you know, quite stable, mild lymphedema. After I started to take LDN, within three months, I no longer had lymphedema. Maybe it was just coincidence. Mm. I don't think so because the, my muscles and tendons in my arm were nothing sore. And with that, the lymphedema disappeared. I think you've got a doctor in um, England, I've forgotten his name. He's a, sort of a worldwide expert on lymphedema and he says that lymphedema is due to inflammation. Mm. And he believes that things like Crohn's disease are just inflammation. Mm -hmm. and, and so you can imagine if you can, if the LDN removes the inflammation and gets rid of these diseases too. Mm. Well, so I'm, I'm the only person I know of that says that they've got rid of their lymphedema from taking LDN. Well, that's quite an amazing story, Nancy, and thank you very much for sharing it with us. Oh, that's, that's, I'm, I'm glad to be able to persuade other people. I really haven't been able to persuade anybody. I tell people, and they think I'm some sort of a... A nutcase, I think. Well, if all those nutcases get together, people are going to have to listen, I think. Oh, I hope so.